Awesome. So hi, Robert. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Design Boat and ADP group sessions. I'm Devki Nandini, and I'm your host today on behalf of Design Boat. Um, if all of you have seen the topic for today, as it suggests, we will be talking about uh, the skills you need as a designer to survive and thrive in the current set of uh, industry standards. And Robert, who is a UX designer at Kindrill, has joined us today to shed some light on the importance of setting design goals for yourself, um, how to set one that fits your interests and uh, your situation the best, and how you can navigate your workspace, deliver value, land your ideas, and much more. So thanks for taking the time out, Robert. We can start whenever you're ready. Yes, pleasure is all mine. Uh, I hope, uh, yeah, I could add value to the conversation. And yeah, so let me just share my screen. Maybe perhaps uh, let me know if you would be able to see the screen one second. Uh, yes. Uh, let me know once you, you're able to see the screen, okay? Yeah, it's visible. It's visible, right? Put it in my PowerPoint mode. Oops, now it's switched. Let me just uh, switch the screen switch display. Yeah. All right. Now it's better. You're able to see, right? Uh, yeah. In full screen, okay? Yeah, full screen. Yep. Okay, let me take this to the other screen. All right. So, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are. Like, uh, glad to see a lot of you from different location. Um, so, uh, this would be, I, I would, uh, I'd actually uh, conceptualize this uh, slide or this presentation, I would say not for exactly like uh, uh, catering specifically to the UI UX design, it's more for a general design audience. So it can be UI, UI UX design. That's why uh, one of the reasons why I asked Nandini was because uh, like if you have visual designers as well, so, or uh, maybe a graphic designer, so they might uh, get some value out of this also. So, so this yeah, is, uh, this, yeah, yes, yes Nandini. Of course. So we do have a lot of audience who must be graphic designers, I'm sure. Oh. All right, so that, that that's good. That's good. All right, so uh, so this is based on uh, like my my experience that I had searching for job, maybe uh, working in the job, falling, getting laid off, coming back, and then so it's been a long journey for me. So like uh, this is kind of like uh, an, a gist of what I would I had learned uh, based on my uh, experience, like. Uh, for, I would say around 15 years, 15, 16 years. All right. So a bit, one second, a bit about me. Um, so I'm a self-taught UI, UI, uh, UX designer. So I started as a gra uh, in, from a graphic design background. So I was, uh, I started with doing desktop publishing where you use, I worked with, I worked in uh, cyber cafes and all. I'm sure now that thing is obsolete. I'm not even sure how many people even know or understand what the cyber cafe is. So basically it's a place where you just go to browse internet. All right. So like I used to be uh, there. So someone used to come with a resume. Someone used to come with a photograph. Please upload my photograph. Please clean up my photograph. So those kind of things. So it's been a long time. So like I wouldn't try to calculate how long it was. So but uh, it, on bottom line is it's been a long time since then. Then I moved into uh, e-learning domain. I learned a bit of Flash and again, Flash is again another tool that is obsolete. So Flash and all that, and slowly, slowly I moved to web design and then I moved into e-learning domain. And from there on during the e while I was practicing the e-learning domain, that was when Steve Jobs lifted his iPhone and that just struck me. Okay, this is what I want to do. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was, but I knew that this is something that I really wanted to pursue. So that's how I became, I would say a UI designer first. And slowly, slowly, then I moved into, then I heard about UX design and then slowly, slowly moved into UX design. Uh, currently, I'm working in uh, Kindrill. So Kindrill is, uh, it's it's a spin-off from IBM. It's, uh, uh, it's a company that uh, work, on, uh, work in remote infrastructure. So what we do is we manage multi-cloud systems. So a lot of uh, organization has a mix 
uh, multi-cloud system where part of it is in private cloud, part of it is in public cloud. So if they need to manage all of them together, so we provide them one uh, console, uh, one entire solution where they can manage, including the costing, including uh, the usage and like the health of the systems and all. So this is where I'm working. So it's primarily an enterprise app domain. Second one. Let me just see how do I move this? Anyways, <clears throat> so uh, oops, sorry. So I am an impulsive uh, holder of ideas. So like I, I am someone who just keep trying to get, keep trying to collect things from wherever. Like I just just keep adding, keep adding to to my ideas. And also this is uh, later on. I will be covering about why this is very important for us as a designer. So what I'll be covering here basically, first is how do you get started? So I, I believe that more, a lot of y'all would be the uh, would be students like just about to start your design career. Like uh, in fact, I think some of the you uh, might be studying. So like I'll start it like uh, how do you uh, maybe apply for a job? How do you maybe I, I'll just quickly cover a few things on like uh, portfolios and also about your resume and what are what are the things you need to add to your resume and to your portfolio. Okay, so this is the first part and also like how to go about finding a job and uh, finding the job that you like. So this is the first one part. And second part is while you're on the job or maybe even before that, in fact, you should have already started is like, how do you keep yourself, uh, keep yourself uh, kind of like curious where you keep learning things, keep, learn, keep learning new things. All right, so, and again, that is really, really important for us as designers because uh, the medium itself is changing, the tool itself is changing, the world itself is changing, right? So thing because everything keeps changing. So and be like today, yesterday I was designing a book cover. Today I'm designing a mobile app. Tomorrow I might be designing ARVR. Okay. So for that, not only the medium of of uh, my what I'm designing for, also the tools changes. So it's important for us to keep uh, learning of what what is next. So that is very important. And then finally, what I'll I'll touch upon is when you are on the job, when you started working. So, what are the things you need to uh, be mindful of? What are the things that you might need to uh, consciously try to uh, build up your skill on? All right, uh, getting started. So, we'll we'll quickly touch upon uh, resumes. We'll quickly touch upon how to find the right job. We quickly touch upon uh, portfolio presentations, and also we'll quickly touch upon. Uh, how like few things that you need to look at interviews. Okay, so this is, uh, again, this is a very um, verbal heavy thing because like I don't have too many examples for this, but I hope uh, like whatever I say it makes sense. Uh, feel free if you have questions and also, uh, Nandini, you have some kind of a question place where you can add your questions and all. Okay, so feel free to maybe later on, I will keep some time for uh, questions and all uh, a bit later on. Yeah, sure. Okay, resume do's and don'ts. Okay, so when you're building your resume, one thing, do triple type, uh, ch check for your titles. Okay, so this is very, 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 very important. Nothing puts us off as someone who's hiring if I see a lot of spelling mistakes in the in the resume, okay? Because what happens is we are designers, okay? And by since we are designers, we need uh, one of our primary qualities, attention to detail, right? So it's important for you to maybe like uh, uh, try to get it uh, proofread by someone who is good with English or someone who knows English or just get it uh, proofread by someone else. Okay. So that it, it, it doesn't look casual. The moment I, if I see the quite a few typos in the, in the resume, I feel that that person is kind of, it doesn't take work seriously or doesn't take like his profession seriously. Okay. So that is again, because this is kind of like the, First impression I have of you, whenever we like uh, a candidate, in fact, even before the uh, portfolio, we received a re resume, right? So we look through the resume. So when we look at it and I see a lot of typos and immediately uh, you are like, I, I, I have a, a bad impression, you, for you formed a bad impression on me at the get-go. Again, avoid using technical jargon that you don't know. Okay, there are a lot of things that floating around, like design system, design theory, design thinking and all. Try to have an idea of it. Don't put any technical jargon if you just feel it is cool. Because what happens is 
when we start uh, when we actually call you for interview we look through your resume and we spot all this and then we literally ask you question okay if you don't know then it's even worse okay then uh, like we wouldn't mind someone not knowing something but we would definitely mind someone who is kind of like uh, lying or someone who is like trying to show they know but even though they don't they don't know so uh, just be careful of this one and then again avoid fancy diagram where you have like skill set 5 out of 6 and you have a pie chart with a skill set of 6 or, or like a, and those kind of thing because that those thing honestly speaking is a very relative thing it looks cool on the design okay definitely if you are maybe applying for a graphic design job or something like that, that that's fine but ideally uh, try to keep because uh, your resume needs to be short and crisp okay if you put too many diagrams and all it eats up the space as well again keep it wide spacing don't cramp everything together and keep it short well formatted and relevant relevant in in the in the sense that maybe you won uh, an award in schools in class 6 I really that that doesn't make sense to me, right? So maybe I will like so those those things. So when you are, uh, if necessary, like uh, uh, customize your resume to the place where you are applying for. So if it is a graphic design uh, portfolio uh, position you are applying for, so maybe show a bit of more of your experience on graphic design. Okay, if it is a UI UX design, then maybe if you have done something on that one, then show those one. Okay, it should be relevant. Okay. finding the right job connections connections connection this is very very important okay like they uh, thankfully thank to uh, social media and all you have a uh, hundred and way to connect so you have slack you have uh, there are there are lots of channels you can just go to go just google slack channel for ui ux okay you will find a lot of channel that you can go through you can connect into it you can get into linkedin okay if you like someone's profile or you feel that uh, This is a person that I maybe in even not now maybe in the future I would like to apply for that company. Uh, send in a connection, but then definitely, if possible, add in a note as well that I would like to connect with you. And then again, immediately after, don't send in your resume. Right? That is like you are connecting just to send a resume. So try to add value to the persons for who's reading your like who's going through your post, who's going through your uh, LinkedIn, and it shouldn't just be a transactional thing. okay try regularly try to post things on linkedin try to regularly maybe post on instagram or or join a whatsapp group or join a slack channel okay so that helps you never know because who is connected to what who is seeing your who who is seeing your uh, post and all you never know okay so it just might happen that uh, for like uh, through some connection you might uh, get a call post application so this is like uh, where I, i in fact i got through it uh, in my previous to previous company where i just went to the website went to the career section i just applied and immediately you never know like if you like the company and you have a good profile even if it's not officially uh, added that they are looking for a job or they are looking for someone uh, to fill the uh, to fill a job you never know it it might be that they just might need someone there okay so try to for, uh, do a like just go to the career section and just apply or uh, through the a system and then maybe find a uh, someone relevant in linkedin and then try to connect with them and try to see if you can uh, start a conversation with them as well follow up on the interview status also so once the interview is done try to like so you need to show that you have an interest in that job okay so after the interview maybe they say i'll get back to you in 3 days after 3 days you you can maybe just write a mail okay say uh, is it a right time to talk or like uh, is there any movement on my status uh, application and all okay so this is important uh i this is a something might not be very popular with a uh, lot of people but uh, and it's it's uh, very enticing when you are just starting off you would definitely would want to join something like an infosys or a pcs if you get a job but uh my my experience and then uh, some other here they would definitely say is i learned a lot because i joined in a smaller company okay that's where you will end up doing everything yourself the uh like while i don't have anything against pcs or infosys or the, those kind of bigger company the thing with them is they have a very structured system okay so you might be added to one particular team one particular job profile you will have and generally they, their job are like their project runs for 6 months 7 months 
one year, two year, three year, four years period. Okay. So at the start of the at the start of your job, you would definitely would want to learn more. It needs to be variety so that you can also ultimately think that yeah, this might be the the right. um interest of me because even with why us also you have enterprise domain you have fine fintech you have health you have arvr so you you you're not even sure when in the beginning what you'd like to do so ideally try to join a smaller company where you end up and it did, uh, in smaller company to to very important thing the project runs very fast so in two months three months the project is done then you are on another project okay so you'll end up learning a lot one and second is in smaller company and all uh they quickly they they are easily they are they can quickly move you around problem with a bigger company is that for uh for you to suppose the project comes to an end or suppose you don't have a work uh, for a certain period in that project okay for them there's a lot of uh, like a uh, processes and systems and all for you to move for you for them to move you to a next project okay so in between like you might actually end up one month two month three months just sitting on the bench Mm-hmm. But with smaller company and all that, that part is flexible, okay? Because they would, in fact, for them it's an advantage for you to switch you around uh, quickly. So this is important. Choose a job profile over a company profile, okay? So imagine, like uh, again, it's a difficult thing to do. Maybe uh, you there is a job of a UI UX design in a company ABC, okay? And then there's a which you not heard of or which you know it's a decent decent size company but uh, like uh, but it's not a very big company okay and then there's another job job profile called for graphic design in capgemini or in tcs so which one would you join it depends on what you want to do if you want to really do ui ux then i would definitely suggest is join a company where you get a chance to do that because uh, in fact even when one of my uh, earlier colleague when i was working with them so they were like when we were there he was into totally into ui ux design okay like we were doing a lot of designing uh, products and all then he got a call from ericsson okay where it was kind of like a graphic design job but because the company was really big he joined it okay and then like uh, then it became then like uh, for two One six month, seven month, eight month, nine month, eight month, the ten month. He's still working on graphic design, and then now he wishes maybe I wish I would have joined in a company where I do UI UX. That's because that's where my interest is. So that's important, and especially initially when you are uh, work, work working on because you you'll be spending time doing what you do, right? Again, a setback doesn't mean an obstacle. Well, okay, you might. get rejected in an interview you might actually be ghosted during an interview you might land a job and then maybe in two months time uh they don't find you fit like again see what happened is you have to one uh, one thing understand is when either you get rejected either you get laid off or anything else it it's not necessarily mean that you are uh, your your quality is not bad or you 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 as a professional is it's not up to the mark it might be there there's a whole lot of reason and chances of it is there are a lot of different reason that it just was a mismatch of uh, expectation and uh, the requirement okay maybe they needed someone that used the that does something totally something else okay and you are really good at something else so there there's a bit of a mismatch i i'll tell you my example okay the first two company that i got to like very initially during my uh, career i got laid off Okay, it's just like three months time. He said, "No, sorry, things are not working out. You you can go." And then, uh, trust me, after a certain point of time, I in, got into a bigger company, in a better position. In fact, even with interviews, also, I've applied to a company. I didn't get through, like for a particular job. Okay, after maybe a three years or four years, I applied in the same same company. I got through with a much 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 bigger profile and a much bigger income. Okay, so. In initially, if it happens, it's okay. It will happen. It doesn't may mean that you you are not good enough. Okay, it just might be there's just a logistical issue or just that uh, there's a mismatch of requirement and uh, what you can offer. Right. It's I know it's a bit difficult when something happens like that to you, but try to keep a keep it in perspective. Okay, keep it in a longer period, uh, in a like a larger context. Cracking the interview, be on time. Definitely, it's very important. Okay, the last thing you want to do is make make the entire uh, interview panel waiting for you. 
All right. So this is very important because punctuality means if you are punctual here, that means you might be punctual when we give you work. Okay. That means you can estimate your time. Right. That, so that, that's very important. And you might need to prepare to wait also because a lot of us who conduct interviews, we have our own work. Okay. So it might be that, okay. And interview something like the HR tells you, you go, you have to take an interview of the person. Okay. So that's kind of like a secondary job for us. So it might be that we are stuck in a meeting and all. And so there are chances that you might need to actually need to wait. Dress for the occasion. All right. I'm not telling you to dress in a very formal way, but try to be like uh, business casual will do, but then try not to be too casual. Okay. But like, you don't need to be too formal as well. And be honest. That's a very important thing. Like what I said earlier, if I ask you something, and then, because we are easy at spotting a uh, lie, okay, you are giving one interview, we've been conducting a lot of interviews. And if we, we find that uh, you lie, it immediately gives us a, a, a view that you are not honest, okay. It's a, so that, that, that is definitely a quality that we don't, uh, most of all the, we don't uh, look for. Again, a white fancy term, it, it's kind of, it, uh, related to being honest. Show eagerness to learn, all right. In fact, uh, in a, one of my previous company, uh, I asked a question to the junior, okay, to a fresh, uh, fresher. He didn't know the answer, but he asked me the uh, follow-up question. Okay, what the answer would be? And immediately I took, I took okay, uh, because we do expect a lot of people doesn't know, might not be the, knowing the answer. But if you can show the eagerness to learn that, yeah, this is something I would want to know. In fact, we took him. We took him uh, because of that, okay, because we saw that, okay, he might not know it, but he was eager to learn. So this is important. Okay. And then do not interrupt because we have high ego. That's, that's, that's how it is. Okay. So like, uh, imagine we are talking and then suddenly uh, you like, uh, because the, somehow that, that kind of a balance is there. Okay. And then research about the company. If you show interest about the company. Okay. If you show interest about the work the company does. Okay. Then that definitely it's something that we would, it would impress the person who are, uh, who is taking your interview. So definitely prepare, prepare in advance. Okay. Before you uh, come to an interview. Okay. What does it do? Like, how will my, how am I supposed to fit into the system? Okay. What would my role be? Okay. So th those kind of things, definitely it, it shows that you are eager to join the company. And it's not like you are doing a mass interview for, in, for 10 companies also. Right. Make an informed negotiation on pay package. So this is important. Okay. Talk in hand. Okay, they will have a lot, lot, lot of things and then you'll have to actually see. If necessary, buy time. Okay, they, I, I know it's very, it's a, it's a big pressure when you are there and then they offer you a job. If necessary, buy, buy time. The only one other thing, uh, one kind of like a secret I can tell you is a lot of times you say, no, we cannot take a decision. No, I need to speak to my, with my family. So that, 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 that's way of buying time. Okay, go back. Look at the, look at the breakup and all. So, uh, and then again, I would say, don't go on promises. Go on what is offered. Okay. A lot of time the HR will say, or you come in at a, you join, join low. We'll definitely, if you are really good, we will uh, promote you in six months time. What happens is when you are uh, not inside the company, you and the company is kind of in an equal, equal keel. Okay. So you can actually, there's, you have a stronger power to negotiate on the salary. But once you get into the company, then automatically you are part of the system. So tomorrow after six months, even if they don't, uh, even if the, uh, they don't uh, provide you the raise as they had promised, it's kind of difficult for you to negotiate because you're already within the system. So try to negotiate as much as possible outside the system. And remember, if they have chosen you, that means definitely they would want, because trust me, for us uh, recruiters and all, to find a person who fits the role, it's very difficult. Okay, it's it's very difficult. It's like it's not that uh, we have a hundred and one one person, and then we can just pick and choose anything. Okay, if we do go into a negotiation stage, it means that uh, we might be interested in what you you have to offer. Okay, so that's where you can actually negotiate, right? Presenting your work, tie them all in a single file. Okay, so I've seen a uh, I I think uh, now uh, people because of the exposure with Behance and because of the exposure with uh, how portfolios are made. So this thing doesn't happen. 
But the last thing that I would want is, I'll say, okay, show me your work. You'll go open a folder, click on something, show me a few work, then close it, close the folder, move out, open another folder, click on something, show me the work. No, that shows that the person is unorganized. Okay. And it is also eating away on the time that we are providing, we are giving it to you. So if possible, there are a few things that you can do. Behance is one of the things, or you can put all of them in a PPT. Or like you can use something called a Notion app or something like that, where you can link all of them up. Okay. So like just put them all in a list and then uh, link them up in a Google Drive or something like that. So that you can actually click on them and it will, it will open it. All right. Show less, talk more. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a very, um, it's kind of uh, like what happened with us is, it's very uh, like uh, uh, we would definitely like to show everything together, right? Whatever we show, whatever we know, we, we want to show it. So, but uh, but try not to uh, do that. Okay, just show a few that is very relevant to them. Okay, but explain your process. Explain it. That's that's the more important part of it. Okay, so rather than we don't want to show your entire, see your entire work. Okay, but what we want to see is how deep you can think, right? What is like if on a particular. Uh, work like how deep you can think, how deep you can go into it. Okay. Again, same thing, be selective on what you want to share. Okay. So if you are applying for a UI UX job, you have like three UI UX work and 10 graphic design work with logos and flyers and all. I would say if you want to show, maybe show two of your graphic design work, but definitely try to show three of your UI UX work. Okay. Don't, don't put everything, don't show everything together. Oh, this is, this, these are the logos that I've done and all. So try to, just be selective on what you want to show. This is important. Include background on the project. Very important. Just don't show a single, sing, simple, single screen. Okay. So try to maybe talk about it. What was the objective of it? Like uh, who was the client? All right. And give a bit more details on it. So that what happened is then they know that you are just not designing. You're just not a designer. Okay. You, you are someone who is looking at a solution in the whole, as a whole. All right, so you are understanding what was the requirement and then how you came, how you had come to the uh, the final design. So it is important. Okay, show your pro pro process. Okay, I've seen a lot of uh, behind. In fact, I do a lot of uh, mentoring. So I've seen a lot of uh, people and all who just showed a polished work, absolutely polished work of few screens. Okay, but what happened is there's a lot of questions that we as recruiter have. Who, how much part of it was your work? How much part of it was someone else's work? Right. And how did you arrive at this one? That is important for us because what happened is the moment we see your process, we know that if we give you a problem, you will be able to solve it because you have a process in place. Right. So don't, don't be afraid to show like three versions of it, which were like terrible version, but that's fine. Okay. So we can see that, okay, you have a uh, proper process, working process uh, on how you work. Okay. So that I, if I give you a question, I know you'll be able to answer it because you have a system. But imagine if I just see the final product, okay. I'm not sure how you did it or what you did it. Uh, like how, how you did it, okay. So this is important, show your process, okay. Don't be afraid to show the grimes and the, like how you went into the garbage bin and then took out a lot of things and all those things. Like this, this is something that we want to show, we want to see, right. And then also again, challenges, if any, so this is a very common question for, uh, from a lot of interview. Do you, uh, what are the challenges you face? And so, because again, same thing, we want to see how you manage to resolve a problem. Okay. Because for any project, there will be issues. Okay. How you are creative enough to resolve it. So this is important. Right. So congratulations, you've got a job. So like you've got through in and you've got a job. Okay. So now how do we continue to stay stay hungry and stay full. Okay, so here, what I'll be covering is, you have to be a net, okay? You have to cast really wide. Okay, I'll explain to this, but then in some particular places, you need to dig really deep as well. All right, and then you need to have a design goal. Okay, this is one of the things that I definitely uh, uh, ask, uh, ask of any designer is, design is not only on screen. Right. So like, try not to be inspired only by looking at mobile screen or by applications. Okay. Go out, go out to the world. Okay. So, and then just look at, uh, try to get inspired fire by art. Try to, in fact, a lot of all the cities have their, have art exhibitions. 
it's all right. And then so like just drop in. In fact, those are most art exhibitions are free. Just drop in. Look at look at the way things are done there. Okay. In fact, you would be surprised at some of the colors that are actually used there, and it might inspire you for your next design. And and it might not be totally uh, related. Okay. So just go out on the world. Like uh, look at things. Like just be open. Okay. It's it's not that you. My learning mode will only start when I look at mobile screen, or my more learning mode will only start when I look at Bihans or Bibble. Okay, your learning mode should be always on. Okay, try to attend art exhibition, try to attend music concerts, or try to just like uh, have some kind of a, like just to uh, enrich your senses. So this is important. And be an an avid hoarder. Like, uh, so how do I hoard? Okay, so I hoard a lot of ideas. Okay, I keep adding ideas to my system because you never know when or how you are planning to use it. Okay, so the when you start designing, it is kind of like a culmination of your entire experience as a person, not only as a designer. Okay, so how do you design? So you never know like what you come up with. Okay, so Instagram is a an amazing place. So if you like typography, then follow follow people who are in typography. Okay, if you like calligraphy or if you like animation motion graphics follow people in instagram save them so i i have a system where i can save them according to categories okay so that that helps evernote evernote i use evernote to uh, save notes okay so save longer articles and all because you never know if that article might be there in the on 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 the net after that okay so says uh, i use evernote to save them i use pocket to save future reads okay so pocket is what happens is it's a, it's an extension that you can add it in your mobile you can uh, add it to your browser okay so if you like an article a lot of times while, while we are working or we look at an article um but we don't have the time to uh, read it just save it okay and then it also uh, allows you to tag them as well for future read and so definitely reading is a big big part not only visual consumption but reading is also a big part of you, you being a designer again pinterest so this is again this kind of like i would call it a disneyland for designers okay so like you have a lot of uh, again it depends on typography it, if you want to look at motion graphics you want to have movie posters like uh, there's a huge uh, variety there that uh, you can have a uh, feedly this is something that a lot of people might not know okay so a lot of website has something called an rss feed so what do we generally do is suppose we want to uh, be a regular visitor to a website okay so what do we do it's like smashing magazine so this is a very popular design website right we just type smashing magazine we looked at it today then maybe after one month or maybe like uh, then we type on type uh, smashing magazine we look at it again so but what happened is all those most of the website they have something called rss feed which what what you can do is like uh, you can just google feedly and just do a youtube okay so where you can add all these a website into one single place okay it's kind of like a, a place where you can read all of them together okay so rather than you visiting those website all the website content go come to this place and so what i do is i have a, i've plugged in a lot of things so let just maybe if possible uh, just show you a very quick demo of this i think it's easier for me to show it then uh nandini you are able to see this right Uh, my browser yes yes i can see it so this is what a feedly is okay so if you look at this one so these are my groupings okay what you can do is you can just create an account in feedly and uh, you can add a feed where you can type let's say smashing magazine there you go all right so you can keep adding the sources there okay then so like look at this like i have website so among the website so these are the uh, places where the information is coming from so look look at this i can see all my uh, articles and all whenever they publish something it gets floated to my system okay so what i do every day is i come to today like i spend around what 15 minutes 20 minutes after lunch okay just looking at what is uh, what is new everywhere okay like again with eclectic space as you can see see i have web design i have industrial design i have movies i have photography so you as a designer you need to be very eclectic okay so like i keep like even in movies so you you'll see a lot of poster designs there like what it is and also so 
it this is one way of keeping yourself updated all right and finally i have something called a raindrop okay so raindrop.io is where i save all my uh, bookmarks this is this is one uh, it's a free uh, application where you can save all your bookmarks okay you can start collecting it so if you like anything and then put a, a tag it right so like the ui and all because you never know like when you would want to revisit it again so be an avid hoarder like hoard ideas and all all right develop an eclectic taste like you you've seen my uh, uh feedly feed right like where i have movies i have uh, uh industrial design i have logos i have branding so you need to develop a very eclectic taste okay of anything and everything in art design music and anything okay because what happened is you never know what kind of work you are going to be designing for tomorrow you might come up uh, some a fintech company might come to you to design for a fintech product domain all right so you will need to learn relearn and unlearn other things and then start learning about fintech domain okay tomorrow someone from a music industry might come to you okay so you need to have an eclectic taste of a lot of different thing uh, on uh, like uh, around the world all right follow the best in the business okay so they a lot of them like uh, they are uh, they have they are in twitter they are in linkedin they are in uh, medium okay so a lot of them they are in medium and also you can uh, check them out so these are these are some of the people that i regularly follow pola pola sure so she's a graphic designer in fact if someone has uh, netflix i would strongly recommend you to look at abstract one uh, abstract yeah abstract one okay so that's uh, that's the design series okay so uh, one uh, one of them is like about her so in fact i think it's uh, even in youtube it's a free free one in youtube as well so you can try to check out uh, netflix netflix uh, documentary on her she's a graphic designer don don norman again a lot of people in fact most of you all would be knowing about him then you have uh, johnny ivy he was earlier uh, apple designer a lot of uh, the design that he's created is the other one that is actually being used around okay uh, luke robleski so he is part of google now so when i started following him he was he used to do a lot of he has a lot of interesting talk in youtube okay so he conducts a lot of uh, talk he does a lot of research on mobile and mobile users i he's now i think in google okay so they are like long talk about uh designing how do you design for mobile first in fact a lot of people who write book you can actually find them in youtube giving a lot of talks okay which are free completely free so you can actually just google in fact you can google any one of these people and then you will get 30 40 50 minutes of full uh, uh like sessions from them all right uh one second yep <clears throat> so and then finally uh, paul rand again he's a graphic designer okay so uh like uh, ibm so he's one of the those iconic graphic designer so just learn about them like learn and look at their work okay learn about how they think that's important go deep so if you are interested in one topic just you need to try to go deeper into that topic okay go deeper into that topic like and how do you start definitely i would say the cheapest way and the easiest way is do start with books because what happened with books is the authors and all they actually paid to go end to end to teach you a topic from very deeply okay so definitely you need to uh, kind of acquire a reading skill reading skill is extremely extremely important for us okay reading which means learning okay things like about face so this is a very good book on uh, user interaction uh, this is by alan cooper and then don't make anything this is a very simple uh, quick start book that uh, you can start off with okay so start with books and all books are an amazing way for you to learn okay because uh, it goes end to end okay if you want to do learn any topic not only uh, ui design any topic start with a book okay because book it goes really deep learn the theory learn terminology this is again sorry uh, very important 
learn theory about design design theory okay this is again very important learn about balance learn about alignment learn about harmony learn about visual art hierarchy okay so uh, there's a lot of uh, things around in, on the internet for all this learn about typography because if you look at it if uh, you are in ui ux design ui design later on if you look at it ultimately uh, if uh, on screen or mobile screen it is mostly about playing with type how big the type is how small the type is uh, other than the images or the icon most of the visual element on the mobile screen is typography so you need to really go deep into typography learn about anatomy of a typography learn about um, leading learn about tracking learn about kerning how kerning affects typography learn about uh, uh classification of typography and everything is available online okay you just need to google it okay learn about colors warm colors cool colors and like uh uh analogous color complementary color okay so learn about all this so these are very important because these will form the basis of your design learn about business okay because you will be learn uh you will be talking you will be dealing with two kind of people okay actually you will be dealing with three kind of people when you start working one is the product manager who deal who who can only understand numbers right like okay psychology is there and one is the developer who can only understand code so you in order for you to get through both both of them you will not learn need to learn to talk their language okay so i'm not talk, tell, telling you to go and like become a php expert or go and become a ruby on real real expert or a or a kotlin expert okay i'm just telling you you have to have a basic idea of how business what are mvp there there are in fact you can actually google uh, the business of design so you can learn this uh, design how it affects business okay learn about roi uh, how 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 it affects business okay so those those things are important learn about technology learn about psych psychology how it affects it okay so look at here so when i'm looking at it there's one thing missing that everyone starts learning okay that figma or maybe uh adobe xd those things you those are tools okay but what will help you to ultimately come up with a product are these tools are easy to learn these are more difficult ones okay and these you need to have an inherent interest in it so try to like uh, start with all this as well work for the company design for career this is extremely extremely important okay so like when you get into a company it's very easy okay it's very easy to like uh, get lost into what it is doing and then what product it is doing but always be on a lookout of what other designers in other companies are doing and what is happening in the design world okay so this is really important you have to broaden your horizon not only to very specific to what your company does or what the product that your company is working on the reason being what happens is tomorrow if you would want to shift it would be easier for you okay otherwise like imagine if you are in a company that deals with a very very niche part niche uh, kind of thing okay and for the next 6 years you just have experience on that tomorrow if you would want to shift you you don't know like you uh, you would wouldn't know what to do because you only know that part okay so it's important for you to have a long term career a uh, long term career goal what you would want to do all right so where you would want to so like in the meantime while you're working also you can try to keep in touch with uh, what is happening in the world design world okay so i i'll give you an example this present company that i got through is they asked me things on design system what is design system and all in my previous company uh, we didn't have a design system so i was curious about this the design system i i learned it and i implemented it there okay and then when this company uh, uh interviewed me so i had something that i could uh, speak about even though it wasn't part of the previous organization which i tried to uh, add it there okay so it's important to have a long term design uh, a career goal take a pro bono work so this is very important okay again here uh, it's a bit difficult for a ui ux designer to take up a pro, pro bono work but for design you can definitely take up a pro bono work okay i tell you i started when i started uh, working uh, like i wasn't even sure i wanted to get into design i started working like i was saying about cyber cafe right then uh, someone approached me that uh, we have an 
association we would like you to do some uh, design work for maybe uh, some diary design work and some newsletter design work there was no concept of money in my mind okay i just knew okay this is something it's help, helpful okay so i started uh, working on the diary design that i cover and all goes again i'm talking about uh, the graphic design part of it right because these are the people is the the, the advantage of doing pro bono work is okay the disadvantage is no money or hardly any money but the advantage is you will get to do a lot of thing you like get a lot of independence to do what you want to do because they would want you to uh, help them out right so and then also definitely the idea is then there's a it sets up a personal csr for you as well to do something good for the uh, for a, so, a social uh, service okay so by the time when i was through with that association uh, whatever they were doing like when i went to apply for another job even though i ha- i didn't do any worthwhile job in uh, worthwhile work in my previous company but i had a lot of things to show okay it was through this association whatever work so it's important for you to do pro bono work as well <clears throat> so here uh, on the job before so here what i cover now you've got into a job okay so while you start a job or while you are working there what are the things that you need to keep a look out for? okay before before you put the first pixel or before you sit with your tool what are things that you need to look at how do you present your work or what are the things that you need to uh, be mindful of when you are presenting your work all right and some thoughts on design okay then i'll stop i'll uh, wrap up with some thoughts on the design part of it 3c before p p i would say pixel p i would say pencil p i would say maybe what uh, like putting anything on screen itself that is don't start just whenever you get a requirement don't just start and start uh, opening up a figma file a figma tool or an exe tool and then just start designing okay there are three things that it's absolutely important before you even start designing knowing the client knowing the content what you are going to put in the, the uh, uh what you are going to what the app is about or what content it's going to be on the app or on the design itself right and finally come up with a concept again this concept thing is more towards um i would say graphic design but it nevertheless it's uh, even for ui ux design also it's important as well know your client okay so this is someone he's written if the job is for a dry cleaner go to a dry cleaner stay there until you have something that you honestly think is interesting to say about the dry cleaning i don't know exactly how to do this but so the idea is you need to totally understand the business of the client because what happens is you your work is not you are not presenting your work okay you are presenting your client's work so you are speaking the client's voice if you need to speak in the client's voice you need to learn you need to think like the client okay so that's important so you need to understand the client okay and what they do how they do it before you so before you even start uh, doing your work okay who the users is so this is an example of uh, uh, one of the work that uh, i did for uh, my previous company it was for public utilities board so public utilities board basically is a uh, water uh, department it's a singapore company uh, it's a singapore uh, government water department basically right so it was a mobile app application for them right we needed to design an app okay for one of the park oh, so this was uh, it was called nature park or something like that okay so it was a something called we, we needed to design an app for the name for the park oh. no sitting here in india i don't have any ability of what looks like what it is and all so if i am designing something for that park i need to at least know something about it right so what i did was i spent hours and hours and hours into looking at youtube videos about the park what does the park do how is it because i needed some kind of a concept i needed some kind of a, a visual branding for me to design an app see for them it like uh, for them it doesn't matter who where they are okay I, ultimately what you produce it needs to resonate with them if they need they, they should be able to identify with with, with it right so uh, while looking at a lot of videos for, about the park suddenly in one second i found this board 
about from the from that video okay so this is the theme it seems like they are you going to use and then if the person is using an app and walking around so somehow it needs to kind of identify with this so when i started designing it i tried to replicate it all right what happens with this is like for the user of course it's supposed to be it's supposed to look like this okay for them it it connects well because they see this kind of a look all around the park and your app has the same kind of look but for you who's like maybe thousands of kilometer away for you you need to first understand it all right so before you actually uh, start with it another one so this is a uh, uh, this is kind of a logo that i did for a company called ruffle so it's a it's a friend actually it was a friend's company uh, like so he he was starting some kind of a waffle shop okay so he came to me he said i wanted to design a logo for for my company i kind of have had an idea of what waffles is so i said let me just go to a couple of waffle shop just go eat the waffle okay i in fact took my family along and I just to eat the waffle just to understand to see what it is how it is and like what what else okay so this is a picture that i took of one of the places where we went okay i took a look collected a lot of picture i tried to see what can come out of it and finally when i designed it i and i i understood a few things about waffle is the cream kind of like overflows uh to each crack okay it kind of like uh, overlaps to, to each of them and it's a very creamy creamy kind of thing so the ultimately the design that came out was kind of a a very smooth curve and look at this okay each of them is connected together like it kind of gives you that waffle creamy kind of a a uh, idea so i i don't know if i were if i would not have gone there and like literally took the waffle and then it was dripping this this idea might not have come to me right so you need to immerse yourself with a with a client know your content it's absolutely important okay because again uh, a lot of common mistake that i see uh, in a ui 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 ux portfolio is lorem ipsum okay try to work on it put some content in it because what happen is the layout of the design it strongly uh, affects the what content it's added into it okay today you you design a layout with just one line of text tomorrow if it becomes two line of text then it will break right so it is important for you to if necessary either bug your content team or try to see what kind of content but try to put as much realistic content as possible onto your application content precedes design design in the absence of content is not design it's just decoration start with a concept okay concept design once an idea has taken hold of your of the brain it's almost impossible to eradicate okay an idea that is fully formed fully understood that sticks right in there somewhere the moment if it's an idea it's a very unique idea that is very unique to your client because what happens with us is when we look at apps of the app apps of the apps a uh, website of the website if they look very similar because they don't have a concept in place you will forget it but if you can come up with a concept and it it becomes very important here's an example okay so this is a, a vipassana app okay so uh, so vipassana is kind of like a meditation app uh, that uh, that people and all are going to use like so there's a lot of uh, like uh, uh, content on how to meditate what what it is and also it's so it's it's actually one organization that do a lot of uh, meditation okay that conducts meditation so i look i looked at it so what i know is it's going to be a meditation app right so i first i always start whatever i do is i start with keywords what how does it need to feel for me it definitely needs to be calm it needs to be meditative and it needs to be serious it's not a uh, something to be played around with it's not something to be toyed around with right it's not a very casual thing it's something more serious for adults or maybe for even older adults okay so that's important so what do i do so these are the three keywords that i start playing around with now i need to convert this into some kind of a visual artifact let's look at calm plenty of white space that that gives me a feeling of calmness soft lines so no no rigid lines okay no sharp curves and all it needs to be flowing cool colors all right so things that uh, immediately can keep me calm 
meditative what are the things that uh, helps me make it meditative repeated patterns right so if you look at uh, a lot of repeti- uh, meditation a lot of uh, maybe religious app so pattern repeated pattern is very important okay so how do i look at it meditate serious is i start with maybe a serifa so this is again a very simple job right uh nanini is a dog barking too loud or you able to hear me slightly loud but i can still hear that's fine yeah you're able to hear right okay. all right i'll maybe i'll speak louder yeah so sorry if that something that i cannot help with anyways uh so this is the design i came up with again you'll have to know that this is a design that was done like 5 to almost like i would say 8 9 years ago okay so the design is a bit dated but you can see again very like repetitive pattern serif font like very clean white spaces all around right and smooth lines right so this is how we come up with concepts okay so start with concept like what do you want the person to feel and then you continue and then you try to see if you can add how you can translate all those feelings into a visual element onto your application onto your ui design onto your graphic design or uh, branding or anything all right this is important you are a designer you are not an artist okay so what you do it should reflect what your client wants not what you want okay it's very easy he like it shouldn't that oh this this designer he has this trademark of using circles okay he'll look at this client he said ah this is robert's work he'll look at that that client he said ah this is robert's work see they, they are putting circles no it should be the voice of the client okay it should not be your voice right so this is how an artist does okay the artist expresses himself or herself okay so the entire the direct expression this is the direct expression of the artist himself okay he or she so there's no intermediary or whatever they want to say they express it themselves okay and it comes out in between is a fashion designer okay where while their expression is important but it's also important for the end user as well who who they are designing it for okay so it's a mix of uh self expression as well the as a client express uh, expression uh, or the user's expression and this is where we are okay we are kind of the branding designer or the ux designer or graphic designer self while self expression is important it's more important that you speak the client's language right it, so if it's a cardims brand so you should so they have a very strong branding system like it's not that no i don't like that color i'll come up with another color for the branding no okay you you are not speaking for yourself you are the client is speaking right so it needs to be synchronized with the client itself presenting your work communication is extremely important okay so uh, what i would say is when you when you're starting out or when you are doing you have to absolutely try to improve your communication okay it's not important of what you put on screen it's also important how you present it because there will be a lot of time that you will be presenting to a stakeholder if you are not able to communicate what you are presenting it no matter how good the design they would think that no this this the design is not as good as it want okay so you have to practice communication when very uh, so uh, one of the thing that you can definitely do is practice public speaking okay so i am not sure uh, how many people of you all know uh, there's this club called toastmaster right so where you can like uh, a lot of uh, cities and all especially the bigger city they have this club called toastmaster you can just google toastmaster all right so like while they have a membership fee okay for you to enter but you can actually just go and sit and look at them speak okay it's for free you can just go and practice okay so communication is extremely important you have to work work on your communication communication again communication is not only about um, how you present or what you present it also about like uh, the terminology you need to know about design okay so tomorrow you say no so this is a nice design i just like this design okay but it will like uh, it then it becomes very subjective the client will say no i don't like the design but if you can approach your design or if you can uh, if you can present your design you say no there's a clear visual hierarchy you see so this is more important now i've used blue color because it's a cool color it will calm the client user 
Okay, so when you use things in a logical way, in a very uh, design, use design terminologies, it will hit the client. So they will not okay, or the stakeholder that you know what you are doing. Okay, and you know what you are talking about. Learn to tell a story. Okay, again, this is very important, right? So because story sticks. Okay, and then a lot of time the client also needs needs a story from you so that he or she can tell tell to the stakeholder as well to other people, right? So here's an example of me telling a story. Okay, this again, this is not a project from of a UI UX. It's more of a branding project. But um, so this is a preview exports. Okay, so preview exports. So what they had come to us for a logo design. Okay, a logo design. So what do they do? They are into juice. So they 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 are, uh, they do uh, manufacture their end to end uh, jute uh, people from manufacturing from like uh, maybe uh, harvesting uh, jute to kind of like uh, putting it in factories and finishing it from the raw material to the finished product the end to end uh, 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 like they they deal in jute okay so this is a concept I presented it we are like the strands of jute. All right, bonded together. Each process close, knit, and connected to the previous one. Okay, so they have a lot of different processes right? because I was doing uh, research on jute and then I saw that, okay, it's not like you look at the final product, they have agriculture, they have factory, then they have sales, then they have packaging. Okay, so each of them are, so this is something that I'm trying to speak the language. Each process is completely different. Yet they are working together to achieve one single goal. We are like you, so strong that we can stand on its own. Okay, so I've uh, dimmed the round part and highlighted the the one that is standing straight. Yet flexible to adapt to the ever changing market. Wait a minute, are we talking about you or our company? Well, it's one and same. We are you and you is us. All right, we are preview exports. Cool. So this, this this logo took me half a day to design, but I spent one and a half day to come up with a story. Okay, and the client saw it and I said, "Yeah, this fellow worked a lot, very hard." Okay, you need to sell a story. It's important, right? So and then I go into the branding visualization. Not only do you need to sell a story, you need to tell like try to understand where it's going to be used. Right, so definitely it's going to be used in the lobby. It's going to be used in the uh, rux burlaps and all. All right, so then they might be making uh, even maybe some kind of a, a thing for the events as well. All right, and then obviously the station is. So you, this is how you tell the story. This is important. And finally, we have a thank you for the print. Okay. When you present the work, there are chances that you are absolutely going to be bashed. Okay, it, it, it will happen. Okay, again, like uh, it's not personal. A lot of people are like, uh, they look at it in their point of view. All right, so try to take the constructive feedback. Okay, but you will, it's not, so if you get bashed, doesn't, that doesn't make you the worst designer. But on the, on the, other hand, also, if you get a total accolade, that doesn't make you the best design. Okay, it just means you uh, like your requirement. Your presentation has fit the requirement, right? So trust me, because us, we are kind of like designers and all. We are kind of the bravest soul. Okay, every time we present something, we are being judged. All right. So and we are being like judged by our work. Okay, like okay, this fellow he's earning so much. What crap he's presenting? Okay, sorry for the language but every time you come come up with something you are being judged okay so you will have to have a very strong heart so definitely design is not for a faint-hearted person okay today if you like uh, it's okay like uh, like if your design get back then you can go back with a cry or whatever but you have to come back again to come up with something else okay and then also try to take criticism objectively if it is if it is something like someone say nah, yeah i don't like your design try to see if you can come up with a try to see if you can come up with a more specific answer from them 
Why don't you like the design? Is it the color? Okay, they said, no, I don't like blue. Why don't you like the blue? Why don't you like blue? He said, no, because our company caters to McDonald's. Or our company is a food industry where people need to use warm colors to make it more hungry. You never know. Okay, so a lot of, because the reason why you present your work is because you want different perspective of different people at that perspective, which you don't even have, right? So it might be that their perspective is correct. Okay, so you might need to look at it in a very objective way. Okay, so that's an important part of it. Some thoughts on design. Design for a complete picture. So this is very important again for UI UI designer. All right, when someone comes to you with a screen, yeah, yeah, this screen, Bernardo. Okay, so I'll create the screen, right? What you need to do is you need to step back and tell me, okay, where's this screen coming from? What is the screen before this? Where's this, where the screen will take me? Okay, because what happened is whenever we are designing, we are not designing in isolation. We are designing it as part of an environment or an uh, eco, like an ecosystem, right? So imagine like uh, a very simple example, simplistic example is maybe a button. You 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 show you design a screen and you put a button which is red color. Tomorrow you'll see okay. While the screen before this is blue color and the screen before after that is red, uh, blue in color. Uh, the button is blue in color. Yours is red, so it will stick out. You remember you are always so. It's very very important that whatever you design, you need to try to see what is uh, try to get a full picture of it. Okay, where it is coming from, where it is going to go, what will happen after this. Okay, what. Uh, in fact, there, there, are, there are something called edge cases when, when we do the UI design. So let's say I'll give you an example uh, in, terms, in terms of a, lo a login screen. Tomorrow, if someone tells you to do uh, design a login screen, you don't just design a login screen with username, with password, with a button called sign in with a forgot password. You will need to design what if there's an error to the login screen? What happens if a password is wrong? What happens if the username is wrong? What happens if they click on the forget password? What happened after they sign in, what will, what comes up? Okay, so, so you will need to, you're not designing in isolation. So it's always important for you to look at what comes before this, what comes after this and the overall picture. So that's very, very important. Once in a while, you need to step back as well. So what happened with us is whenever we are designing, we get so engrossed into our system, our design, that sometimes a very obvious thing like we fail to see. So once in a while, just tune off. Okay. Or maybe show it to someone who's never seen your design and get a feedback from them. Okay. So that's important. I'll give you an example. Again, this is uh, more towards um, uh, logo design, but it, uh, but then hopefully it drives home the idea, right? So this was a design that I presented. Okay. This was a logo for one of uh, like um, kind of uh, a group uh, we, we had random like office, we had some random groups and all where we were supposed to present a logo for our group name. Okay, so our group was called Indus. So we had to present our design, logo design. Okay, so I kind of like went into the amazing way of that smile and then this kind of and, uh, I and us kind of a thing. And, and it looked really nice. Uh, it was, it seems uh, pretty interesting. Okay, then I took it and I presented to the uh, main like not I didn't even like even my team and all because I managed to convince my team okay this is my vision and those kind of thing and they were really happy about it then we presented to the entire company okay and the first thing that they say are this is Intel I said oh I never saw it like that all right so it's important for you to step back and just get fresh perspective or fresh eye on to that it's very important because like uh Otherwise, like if it goes out to the world and then you get a different perspective, then it becomes very complicated. It is not done till it is delivered. Okay, when we design, we are not designing for, uh, we are not designing for Behance. We are not designing for Dribble. We are designing for a product that ultimately comes out on the market. Right, so it is important. It's not key. Hello, my design is done. Forget development, forget everything. I'm happy because I got, a portfolio, decent portfolio done. That you will be doing injustice to your profession because what you you it's not what you design is what ultimately get produced. That is important, right? I'll give you an example. 
This is what you designed. Okay, a Mona Lisa masterpiece, right? You are really happy. Okay, and you you post it in Dribble or wherever you want, and you get a lot of accolades and plus and a lot of favor, uh, hearts and a lot of thumbs up, right? Then you transfer it to the developer, but what happens is you fail to let them know a lot of details. So it's very very important that when there's a handoff, okay, to your dev team, you have to be very specific. It's kind of like I think it's called Murphy law. Whatever can go wrong will definitely go wrong. All right. So if you miss something, then the dev team will not come back to you. He'll put your his own design mind and then put something else on onto that. Okay. So it's very important to be very very specific. A and more importantly, it's very important for you to be a friend with your developer. And casually, because a lot of time, a lot of the work that they do is not uh, like formally presented to you. So you can go, just go and grab a cup of coffee. Uh, show me what what you are designing. Okay, I have a very nice cordial relationship with the developer. Okay, actually, I have a very nice cordial relationship with the entire team. But make your developer your one of your best friends if possible. Okay, so imagine if you send it to the developer and you have failed to provide some kind of information. Now what happens is the developer. Needs to fill this part. He or she say, "Okay, now I'm not sure what they came up. What were they thinking about this part?" All right. So what happens? They fill in their own stuff. Okay, and it might not be very pretty. And the client is like, "Absolutely, the last thing." Right. So you, this is not you. What you might need to be is you might need to be involved throughout. That is your involvement. Okay. That is your involvement. If you are thinking this part is you, then you are doing a disservice to your design position. What you need to do is you have to ensure that what is produced by your company or by the people who you've hired hired you to do, right? Do the right thing. Ethics. That is it's absolutely very important. Okay, design is a really, really, really powerful medium because you are going to. Because you have the power to manipulate images, you have a power to create feeling. You have a power to uh, manipulate feelings. Okay, so it's important for you to like. It's very easy to like post off your work that yeah. See, look at what I did. Okay, I managed to get a thousand people hooked to my application. Right, your company might win. Okay, your company might earn, but at the end of the day, you have to look at it. What did you create? Because what you put in the, the the biggest thing about us designers is what we put in the world, it kind of like floats around to infinity, right? So tomorrow you should not you look at it. You say, is this something that uh, align with my ethics? Is this something that align with my value? All right. So it's important to so there there there's this uh, person called Mike Montero. Okay, like uh, M I K. I think it's M O N T E I R O. You can Google him. Okay, he is a proponent on uh, design and design ethics. So, did he has a video on YouTube called um, "Why the Designer Destroyed the World"? Okay, look at that. Okay, learn about design ethics. So, that is extremely, extremely important for you to do the right thing, not uh, more as a human design as you as a human being as well. Because we designers are supposed to be good, right? So, we are supposed to produce good things. So, that's important. And work is not life. Build a safe house. Okay. Try to have a hobby. Try to have something that you can turn turn off what you do and just like because what happens is you, trust me you will have good days you will have bad days in in design. Okay. So but then that should not affect the rest of your life. Okay. So whatever happens and uh, it's it's very difficult for us because. We are so passionate about what we do. Tomorrow, if it gets rejected, tomorrow if we get a feedback, we kind of like it gets hung over whenever we go out or like even when we are at home and then we start brooding about it, right? But try a way to switch off. Okay, again, it becomes more difficult because now we are working from home, so everything is kind of like merge your home and your work is getting merged. But try to have some way to turn off work and turn on life. Okay, it can be uh, through uh, it can be through kind of like a, maybe a hobby. It can be like spending time with your family as well. Because I, I've seen someone who's saying, 
uh, who comes home and say, no, don't talk to me today. I had a bad time at work. No. Then what is the fault of your family? If you had a bad time at work, right. So you will need to try to, seg- to stay, stay sane, to stay alive, to stay fight for the next day. You need to have a mechanism to switch on and switch off. It can be a habit. Like me, I have a work computer. I have a work desk. I have a house computer. I have a house desk. Okay. The moment work is done, I switch it off. I physically move to another room. I physically do start doing something else too, so that I can turn off and turn off. That is very important. Right. Work buddies, again, same thing. Work buddies, stay at work. Okay. Try not to bring it. Try not to let it to affect uh, your other part of life. Yes. In fact, I am just in for one and a half hour. Yeah. Uh, what I can help you with, do you think that I can actually help you with is uh, HFI, if anyone would want to do HFI CUA courses. All right, I can help you with uh, online resource materials. I can help you with uh, book suggestions and feel free to, and this is my website, so then feel free to go in and uh, so there's a, a lot of different ways to connect with me. So I've added it there. So like uh, uh, there's there are a lot of materials and all, so feel free to connect and just, uh, yeah, if there, there's anything, reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, Nandini, I'm over. Yeah. Awesome. So I think we can take a few questions quickly from the audience. Guys, uh, please raise your hands and we can shoot questions to Robert now for some time. Um, okay, we have Pratika. Hey, yes, hi, Robert. Thank you so much for this amazing session. It was really, you know, wonderful to know all these things and aspects which we didn't know. Uh, so my question is, uh, so will there be, like, when you're switching companies, will there be any stability issues if somebody switches uh, very rapidly, you know, within a one year of time because of certain work, work culture issues or companies not in a good shape or has a bad culture? So if such things happen, uh, will it affect the future employability? Like, there is a lot of stability issues, right? When you uh, switch more often and recruiters don't see it in a good way. So can you please share your thoughts on how to do or what to do in such a situation? Uh, yeah, so uh, Pratika, right? Okay, yeah. thanks, thanks for your, so what happened is sometimes it's in, in, inevitable, okay? You might need to switch uh, for your mental well-being. No, it, it, so there are co- good company, there are equally there are some, some company that would kind of like... Uh, literally squeeze you out of your mental health and physical health and everything. So it's true. Uh, now what happens is like whenever someone recruits, they generally see your trend. Now, if they keep seeing that you are jumping from like six months, one year, six months, six months, three months, four months, then it becomes a, uh, a concern for them. Then it becomes a source of concern. But if like you switch one place or two places and you actually have a genuine reason to do that. So if the company values you, and if the company feels you're honest, so it should be okay. Right. So like, I, I'll tell you uh, again, uh, an example from my side is I, one of the company that I joined in, uh, coincidentally, I was applying for a much, much, much bigger company. Okay. Uh, while, while I was in that company, then what happened is like, while I was there, uh, I think within 10 days, I got through the another bigger company. But for professional courtesy, I told them that I'm going to serve one month's notice here. Okay. And and uh, because I had committed here. And then so that I will then later on, then I'll move to another company. So again, uh, important thing that you brought, brought it up is never burn your bridges. Okay. So this is extremely important because you never know when or how it's going to come back. to you. Okay. So I, I feel as long as you're able to earnestly uh, make the people understand about it. And as long as your resume doesn't keep showing uh, jumping like three months here, four months here, five months here, then it's a bit of a source of concern. Oh, I hope yeah, I'm able to answer. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Um, Sharon, do you want to ask next? Hi, hello. So my question is actually about the technology part. Maybe I've missed out something, but uh, gener- generally technology is very, very vast. Specifically, what should we focus on? For our case, uh, specifically again, it will depend on uh what you would be working on. 
ideally like suppose if you are going to work on mobile application then a bit of how how they lay out uh how they uh, put a layout on a on on a language called kotlin or a language called swift swift okay which is for ios and all so just have a general idea about how things work okay and then you need to know know about what are front end what are back end like how data gets pulled because a lot of times you will get a push back okay you say i'm designing you say no it, uh, it's going to take a long time like because the, the back end is a bit of a problem then so you need to understand how the ultimately how your screen or design gets presented okay how does the data come okay learn a bit about like uh, what are back end what are back end server uh, how how database connects with uh, uh, kind of like the front end and how ultimately uh, how it is presented in the front end like maybe even a bit on html a bit on css a bit on uh, react and also like so the presentation part of it is definitely important how things get uh, layered and how things get uh, layout but you also need to learn about how the data comes into it okay uh but i am not telling you to learn to code it code it but you need to understand the workflow how 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 things happen okay thank you that's a very good um holistic idea thank you yeah welcome uh archana maybe you can unmute and ask your question hi robert hi devaki uh, thank you so much for this session. Uh, I really learned a lot in this one hour. Uh, yeah, and uh, the question I want to ask is with regard to typography. Uh, yes. and, uh, uh, I'm someone who's just coming back to this after a while. And then um, other than uh, the factors like legibility and uh, other than the factors like uh, if something is modern or if something is serious, what are the other considerations you take into before choosing a typeface for a project? Uh, yeah, so uh, Archana, right? You are. Yeah. So uh, there's one another factor that you might need to uh, factor in is the technical aspect of it. Okay. So like if you are going to design it for a multilingual app, application, then you will need to ensure that the uh, typeface that you choose has support for multilingual, uh, has a multilingual support, okay. And especially maybe uh, Russian characters, okay. So that is very important. Again, it also depends on uh, the license part of it. So again, this is the business part of it. Like you uh, generally with Google, um, Google font, most of them are uh, free for use in the commercial project, but you still need to have some kind of a declaration into the app or place where you want to add it into it. So there's a commercial part to it also. So, so the commercial part is that there's a technical part to it also. Like whether you are able, you can, you are allowed by the company to use uh, this kind of font or not. And then beside that, then there's a design aspect on about like mm, how the how is it look uh, in a smaller type volume font? How does it look? Do what about the X height? Okay, so like uh, so if for this, then I guess you might need to just brush up on the typography. Like what are the par paragraphing? Uh, how 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 is the default leading? Okay, like uh, again, how big, how, uh, what is the vari uh, variety of font type size you are going to use? Okay, because some of the typeface are designed to be very legible and, and it looks very nice on big bigger screens. Okay, but when it is reduced, then it becomes difficult to see. And then also the width of the character as well. So some of the places maybe uh, like, so, so this is the uh, typeface that I use. I think it's Montserrat. Like, because I have a lot of space here, okay. So I, I have used a wider typeface, but some of the time when you might need to squeeze in on a lot of content into a screen, then you might need to try to choose a narrower typeface. Okay, so those those, those things, those factors are important. Thank you so much, Robert. You're welcome. Um, Prabhakar, I'll ask a question right after Dipali asks. So Dipali, please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, hi, hi. Dipali. Uh, hi, Dev Devki. Hi, sir. Uh, yeah. Actually, I'm just a beginner. I am just mm -hmm. start uh, learning this course. So I just wanted to know that uh, what is the future of U UX UI? I mean, uh, what would you think or what would you say that in the next 10 years, where will be the UX UI? Wow, that's a very difficult question to answer. Yeah. So, 
I can I can definitely tell you maybe in the three years or four years or something like that mm, things like metaverse is coming VR will VR and AR will play a big role ML and um, or machine learning and AI will definitely play a big role so a future is what happens is depend on the people who are creating the medium to consume it okay like if today we are looking at mobile application because Apple is producing mobile phone tomorrow Apple decides to produce cars, then we might need to, in fact, it's already thinking about it, then we might need to look at uh, UI UX in terms of the uh, dashboard of the car, or in terms of how it's going to be in the environment of the car, right? And then, they're, 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 in fact, the interesting thing is, uh, there are a lot of companies that are kind of like taking a step back, where they're going to uh, they're going into the analog mode. So there are a lot, lot of uh, interaction that is happening using analog systems. Okay, so I will give you an example of Spotify. So Spotify is coming up with a device that you can actually, there's a physical knob where you can change music. Okay, they feel it is a more tactile and it's more easier to use. So again, that might be another direction that you you might need to say thing that uh, there's just too much digital thing and then uh, it might need to get into the analog way. So yeah, so that, that that's, uh, but it's a difficult question. The idea is, Keep connected to uh, just keep connected to the chatter that is happening around. Try to connect with the uh, people and all who are in the forefront of design. Okay, medium is a good place to for you to connect. Okay, so just just uh, and go as go in the flow. That's what I can suggest. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> Sorry for the long answer, but I hope it's <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so Prabhahar, if I'm pronouncing that right, has asked for someone who is transi transitioning the career to design, what's more important to focus on? Can the previous work be presented in the resume or like a small part in the portfolio? Uh, if it is relevant to what you're applying for, I would say yes. And second, if, if um, you don't have too much of a uh, thing to present, but I would definitely would want uh, would push for more like uh, if you can try to come up with a, a what you call a hypothetical project, okay, a self project, okay, that would be more important. So suppose uh, you are applying for a role of a UI UX designer in my organization, okay, but you don't have UI UX design experience, you have a, a experience on branding, okay. How would it would be very difficult for me to judge a person how he or she will fare in my company if I can only see branding, okay? If you are interested, already interested in UI UX, the chances is that even if it's not an actual product, you would al already have started building up some kind of a, uh, a portfolio on uh, maybe using uh, some hypothetical product. So it's important for you to come up with a self project where you present what you are interested in doing. Or interest in applying for. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Robert. Um, do we have time to take three more questions? Ah, uh, yes, I think so. Like maybe if uh, others, if they get late, and they can maybe drop off. Okay, I think we'll yeah. take three more questions. Uh, All right. ITBT, <laughs> please unmute and ask your question. Mm -hmm. Hi, Robert. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Yeah, so I'm Fahim. I just got this weird name on my laptop. I don't know why. It was an amazing session. <laughs> Learn a lot from you. So mm -hmm. I just want to ask you one thing. Like for someone who is a newcomer and like on the starting of his career, they just moved into SaaS. And for like past four or five months, I've been working into SaaS. And like mm -hmm. it's for a particular like niche audience where mm -hmm. the design is totally different from the general audience. It's sometimes not even a graphical user interface. All they want is a full control. They just want everything there, you know, working for developers who just deploy servers, applications, databases. So as you were telling, like after five years, you should not be stuck with the same mentality. And when you were saying this, I felt like this is happening to me right now. I don't know like uh, what's going on in the rest of design world, all I feel that I'm stuck with is this SaaS thing, all these technical things. So how do I stay updated for like, uh, maybe if I'm switching after two years or maybe a year, so how does one do that? Uh, like, 
Yeah. So, uh, may I know your name, please, first? Fahim. Fahim, right? Yeah. Oh, all right. Oh, Fahim, hi. I hi. guess we met earlier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we met. Yeah. So, uh, so, Fahim, what I would say is, uh, for all those designers also, if they are kind of like, I wouldn't say stuck in a job, that sounds really sad. Okay, but it's not, not stuck you are, in a job, but not like, being stuck with the yeah, right. So what, you, yeah. so, what you might need to do is where you want to go next. Okay, mm. so where you want to go next, suppose you are interested in ARVR, or suppose you are interested in uh, uh, B2C, uh, B2C, uh, consumer, uh, consumer product. Okay, so mm -hmm. what you might need to do is try to, I, I know it's difficult, but try to take out some time outside work to learn about it, to prepare for it. Okay. You don't just jump for the sake of, just jump and say, uh, like, see, this is kind of the work that I do, but I want to do this work. Can you give me a job? It becomes difficult. Again, it's become very difficult for a recruiter to judge. Okay. If you are only doing SaaS, SaaS, uh, SaaS product to know, to, to uh, ask you to see if you can, you are able to work with a consumer product. What you might need to do is plan six months, one year in advance, or six months in advance, and then try to see if you can learn, understand, come up with a project, uh, come up with a uh, pet project or a personal project that caters to the kind of work that you would like to do. Okay. Okay, and then once you're ready, and then you have some kind of a decent portfolio, you can say that even though I don't do this kind of work, but I have, I have some kind of a uh, inclination to it, and I am, I can like, uh, this is what I, 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 uh, I'm capable of. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. So always plan, plan ahead. So oh. in fact, I would, I would uh, uh, ask all everyone here also to have some kind of a self assessment after every six months. Okay. That is this what I want to do and what next I want to do. It's very easy. The moment you get into a good company or a comfortable company, then you you kind of like keep working, keep working, keep working. And then at the end of the like, what did I learn? Every time, like it's important for you to set a, your design goal and see if your design goal and the company's goal is the same every six months. Okay. If it's not the same, then maybe plan in advance in where you want to jump to next. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Um, Ur Urvashi asked your question quickly. Yes, Urvashi. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, Urvashi. Hi, Urvashi. So, uh, just wanted to know one thing, uh, like uh, for any product, uh, the target audience is the like, important thing, right? So, I just got cross... Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes, 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 Urvashi. I can hear you. Yeah. So, I just uh, wanted to know, like... Uh, how to initiate and how to justify it with the particular age group I have taken for a particular product. It's like based on the research, what I have done, uh, you know, online. So do you think there is any other way to uh, check up on what is the target audience of a particular product? You know, can you suggest uh, for that thing? Hmm, interesting. Uh, I would say maybe benchmark it, like uh, a competitor product that... Uh, uh, what is the competitor product? Because a lot of time when we are developing a product, we are not uh, like we need to, it's in scratch or we are trying to see if we can uh, uh, like align to some other product or a better product and something that is there. So I would definitely say try to benchmark other product and all. And maybe, okay, now it's interesting is to know who the target audience is. One, one easy answer would definitely be the person who has come to you with that product, he or she would definitely have a bit of a, an idea of who they would want to target to, uh, target yes. for. So that that's important. And then also maybe benchmark with other products and all of similar nature and then see where they advertise, how they advertise. Okay. And like uh, what kind of like maybe the visual language they use. So that way, maybe you can get a bit of an idea about the product. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. Yes. Welcome. Okay, we have two more questions, Piali and Kailash. So, Piali, do you oh. want to ask your question? Yes, yes. So, hi, Robert. Hi, Nandini. Okay. Thank you for, you know, taking such a wonderful session. Uh, you know, complete uh, me being completely new by into this uh, field. So, 
it was very knowledgeable so my question is like uh, i did my btech okay in computer science and after which i have uh, some years of gap and now uh, i have started this you know my career in this field uh, past few months so uh, you know um, so my question is like how uh, i'm going to you know answer for my gaps or if you being a interviewer how are you going to you know take this your career gap as a you know interviewer so i would like to uh, get your thoughts on this oh uh, she it's uh, i i'll tell you my my one okay i had a career gap of one year okay so if if the interviewer has asked you uh, you have requested to see your work i have requested to like you seem to be a good fit to them then a gap it can be a personal gap it can be anything okay so as long as you're honest about it and you and i uh, you let them know i think it should not play a big role on uh, it should not play a big uh, hindrance on uh, your hiring like in fact i i don't i generally okay if i do see a gap in the resume the ideas i'll just ask okay so it can be uh, it's a personal reason or whatever okay so we don't start judging people about why that gap is there right okay. so this is generally we don't do okay but i i feel as long as you're honest about it why that gap is there then i think it should be okay yeah okay okay thank you okay so also another question i have that since uh i was doing a uh, fashion designing in between okay mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. i have another set of uh, works that i was doing in in that field so should i be posting it and you know i should be telling that yes i was involved in this one and telling them open you know uh, at front or should i be you know uh, telling how am i uh, you know supposed to frame my answer like explain my gaps yeah i guess like if, if like uh, in your in your case if it's uh, fashion designing or uh, things that might be directly or indirectly be related to the design like obviously you won't you don't show the entire uh, like uh, gamut of what you've done because i'm sure there will be a lot of experience on that one but uh, a bit of it would definitely help for them to understand where you're coming from and maybe a bit of your uh, thought process and all so like uh, it's happened in fact a lot of people who's uh, applied to our organization they they are from like a btech background they are from mtech background they said they want to switch so the idea is the the fault is not in the switching part of it okay the the like what we want to know is why you want to switch and also if you actually have the competency or capability of coming into this field what okay. you've done earlier is what you've done earlier okay so that uh, we are we are not people to we are not supposed to be judge judge about that what we are purely judge about uh, we would judge is uh, what capability or what you bring to the table to us right so if you have a bit of uh, like a demo work or something that you can show that what you you have done maybe a few project that uh that can show that you you can you'll be able to work with us and then you would be a good fit to us and why not right mm-hmm. okay thank you thank you so much welcome. for your answer thank you welcome uh, let's we have a last question from kailas yeah. all right okay thanks devi hi robert yeah hi kailas so something uh, strikes uh, strike for me when you was talking about hypothetical projects so my question is mm-hmm. around uh, so um, when we work ar- on hypothetical project uh, especially uh, when we do a ux part and uh, do a research so mm-hmm. uh, instead of working alone on that hypoth- uh, hypothetical project will it be a good idea to work in a team um, you know look for uh, some another uh, team of uh, you know enthusiastic people and collectively uh, as a team work on that hypothetical project so we can do a research together we can do a brainstorming and come up with different ideas and uh, one more question uh, i mean uh, i just want mm-hmm. to know your thoughts around this when you see a portfolio uh, when something comes uh, for for you to interview and when you see a portfolio and you see a co owner of that particular case study how do you look at it i mean uh, what what are your thoughts around it 
Yeah, so uh, Kailas, right? So I think both of your question is related. So you you are saying like, what if it's a combined project? Okay, it's a combined effort. So a the first, let's let's look at your first question first. First about like, should you actually just do projects on your own, or should you try to combine it? I would say both works well. Okay, even if you can combine that is that that work well also. But as long as you are very clear about your role in the project. So we look at a lot of portfolio. It says that okay, these this was the uh, done by this is the teamwork. Okay, but you can actually if you are able to identify that okay, I did the wire framing, I did the research, or I did this part of the UI design. Okay, so as long as you are very clear about which part you've done, it definitely helps the recruiter. Okay, so and I I would in fact uh, we would be really happy if you can. Actually, do a combined project. Okay, so that that means it it actually shows you the capability that you you can work as a team. So it's it's a good good thing. The only pro, the only uh, downside I think about uh, working a uh, doing a group project is sometimes you would like to do something different, like uh, which is an individual thing. So that is fine also. But uh, so like again, like other might not share the same enthusiasm for you to work on that project. All right, so that's the only downside. But I I I feel. Again, it's a good idea if you can show it that this was were, were, uh, done by a team. But more importantly, you have to show which part was your uh, what was your contribution to it. Whether it's wireframing, whether it's user research, whether it's benchmarking or whatever. So that 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 part needs to be very clear for the recruiter. Yeah, Kailash. I hope I answered your question. Uh, yes, Robert. Thanks for your thoughts. Okay, welcome. Awesome. Thanks yes. a lot, Robert, for answering all the questions in detail and for the amazing session. Um, we definitely know a lot of tips and tricks now that we must have up our sleeves as designers, <laughs> and I hope everybody implements it. Um, thanks again. You can reach Robert through uh, LinkedIn and ADP List as well. And yes. uh, if you guys have any suggestions for the upcoming sessions, you must definitely reach out to us because we will bring in speakers who can talk about topics that you're interested in. And um, last but not the least, if you're keen on knowing more about UI UX, we uh, Design Boat has um, demo classes every Sunday. So you must go to the studio and attend these classes and um, you can register through the websites. So thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. Okay. Uh, Nanni, is it okay if I can share a, a kind of like a feedback form with you? If you can share it with others here in the team. So what will happen is that will help me to maybe uh, get some feedback on the session that uh, I've taken. Put that. Uh... So all right. We then I email that we send out to all the participants, so we can send in the form as well. Yes, yes, yes. And I definitely. All of you send in the feedback because that would definitely help Robert for the yes. next session. That, yes, that would help. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Thanks all for being patient and for hearing a long monologue. And nice to have uh, questions and all. Uh, so it seems like uh, others are interested. Thanks and thanks, Nandini, for hosting this. Yeah. Absolutely. So Very valuable. All right. Uh, good day then. Good morning. Good evening and good night. I would say. Okay. Bye bye. Bye-bye.